Welcome to Marketplace Ministry Lesson Number One. Today's lesson is called Anointed for the Marketplace. But before we get into what anointed for the marketplace means, I want to tell you a little bit about my story. At the age of 16, I had a pretty radical encounter with the Lord. And it was at a Catholic retreat through my high school. And being a, a good Catholic, I felt at that moment that I was called to, to ministry. And in my own mind, full-time ministry in Catholicism meant becoming a priest. So eventually I went into priestly formation and I had this strong calling after this encounter. And at a certain point, two years before ordination, I felt uh, like I really needed to leave the formation because the priesthood was not for me. And yet, at the same time, I felt like I was still called to full-time ministry. So it was a bit confusing to me that I was leaving priestly formation and yet still felt like I had a full-time calling into ministry. So I left that, went into counseling, and spent about 15 years as a full-time professional counselor, doing marriage counseling, doing individual counseling, doing addiction counseling. And in my own mind, it seemed like I was in formation for full-time ministry. Then I went into the secular world and worked as a counselor. And that was totally separate and had nothing to do with ministry. Then after a period of time, I was invited to join the staff at a Methodist church and became an associate pastor. And it felt like in my own mind that I was transitioning back into ministry. After a period of time, I started studying and learning about what it means to be a marketplace minister. And it was like this great weight was lifted from me when I realized that I have been in full-time ministry the whole entire time. It didn't matter whether I was in the seminary, whether I was serving in a parish, whether I was serving as a counselor, whether I was serving in a Methodist church. It was full-time ministry the entire time. In fact, truth be told that I saw in my counseling practice more marriages restored, more families, reconciled, addiction broken off of people, a lot more so in that context than I have working in a church context. So really, ministry was being done in the secular arena, but I didn't call it ministry until I started to realize that I'm a full-time marketing minister, a marketplace minister, whether I'm inside the church, outside the church. And my message to you as a believer that you are a full-time marketplace minister. It doesn't really matter what your job is. You're called to bring the kingdom into that specific sphere of influence. So today we're talking about being anointed for the marketplace. What does it mean to be anointed? Being anointed means that it literally means to be smeared with the Holy Spirit. But being anointed means that you're empowered by the Holy Spirit to do things at a higher level than you could do naturally. If this is what you could do naturally in your best efforts, when you get empowered by the Holy Spirit, all your abilities, all of the, uh, the works that you can do get raised up to a higher level beyond the natural, which is what I call supernatural that as a marketplace minister, you are empowered, you are anointed. It's the Lord's desire to give you his spirit so that you get empowered to do works high above what you could do in the natural. There's many, many biblical examples of that. You know, Solomon was a smart man, but when he was anointed with the Holy Spirit, he became the wisest man in the world high above his natural abilities. Uh, King David was a great warrior, but when he was anointed by the Holy Spirit, he was able to fight at a level higher than he was capable, and therefore he was able to defeat Goliath. 
We all know Samson was anointed with the Spirit and he had supernatural strength to do things that he couldn't do naturally. And of course, Jesus did no miraculous works until the Spirit came upon him during his baptism and he announced his, his uh, job description and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me and he went through all the things that he was anointed to do, bring good news to the poor, to uh, open the eyes of the blind, to break oppression uh, over the captives, to set freedom to the prisoners. And he was, he was imbued or empowered with the Holy Spirit to be able to execute all these things in his life. And in the same way that Jesus was anointed, the Lord wants to anoint you to do marvelous works within the marketplace. The Lord wants to anoint you with the Holy Spirit and power to fulfill your unique assignment in the marketplace. There's a scripture, Acts chapter 1, verse 8. It says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witness first in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into the ends of the earth. Jesus has promised to his followers, to his marketplace followers, was that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And it's the same promise that he has for you and I in our own unique ministries. He says, Dean, he says your name, he says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witness. Notice what he says, you shall be my witness in Jerusalem. He didn't say you will receive power so that you will be my witness within the four walls of a church or of a gathering of believers, even though you are empowered to do ministry there. But Jesus was very specific, he said, you will receive power to be my witness in the city, in Jerusalem. If he was talking to you and I today, he would be saying, you will receive power so that you can be my witness in New Orleans, in the parish of Orleans, Jefferson, St. Bernard, in the state of Louisiana, in the nation of the United States and to the end of the world. There's concentric circles that he says, you will receive power and be my witness. But notice he says, in the city, in the heart of the marketplace is where you will be my witness. The other thing I want you to see in that verse is that when Jesus says, you shall receive power, that word power can be translated as greater strength, supernatural strength, but it also can be translated as abilities. You shall receive supernatural abilities when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall witness in the cities. There is an anointing, there's the Holy Spirit that wants to be poured out on you so that you can be empowered to bring the kingdom into the leaven of our cities. When I say the marketplace, as I've mentioned before, it's all the systems in the marketplace. It's the educational system, it's the business system, it's the governmental system, which makes up the heart of the city. And then he says, I want to empower you to bring the kingdom message there and to witness through signs and wonders that will infiltrate that as a witness of the kingdom of God. Abilities are really abilities of the Holy Spirit. There's many of them in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul talks about nine different abilities that the Holy Spirit can give us, but there's many more than that. But one of those is like the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is the ability to have, to understand facts about things that you can't in the natural, like you supernaturally, the Holy Spirit reveals to you facts about what's happening in the world right now. I remember hearing a story recently about a lady, a woman who was an executive in a Fortune 500 company. And she was in prayer one day and the Lord revealed to her 
that another executive in the accounting department was actually cooking the books and, and stealing money from the company. And so she went to her boss, she said, listen, we've been struggling financially some, and I got from a good source that you need to check out this man and to check out what he's doing with the books. And he said, well, how would you know anything about that? That's not even your department. She said, I just know from a good source. And so the boss took her on the word because he really respected her and he checked out what this man was doing and it was revealed to him that he was, he was manipulating the books to gain a profit for himself but actually stealing money from the company. And the boss from the Fortune 500 company came to her and said, how did you know that this man was stealing? You know, you had no, no dealings with him. And she said, well, I got it from a good source. Who's your source? I want to know. She says, well, I don't really, who's your source? She said, God was my source. The Lord revealed this to me. And he was kind of mystified that, that she would say that God revealed this to her, but he believed her because it, it played itself out. And then she, he later asked her, you know, is there anything else that the Lord's telling you? <laughs> But can you imagine the favor that she got with her boss because she was endued with power with the Holy Spirit, received the word of knowledge, and was able to reveal a stealing that was going on within the company. I heard a, another example of a, a man who was asked to, in another large company, was asked to give his advice on how to make a presentation in order to get a multi-million dollar bid for his company. So the man said, let me think about it overnight. And he went in his prayer closet. He started praying about, you know, what to do and, and asking the Lord for some understanding on how to present the bid to maximize their chances of getting this particular multi-million dollar bid. And he kept hearing an impression inside himself that was saying, emphasize the environmental aspect of the bid. To make a long story short, the environmental aspect of the bid wasn't even important in terms of the bid, but he kept hearing emphasize it. So he told the boss the next day, he said, listen, when you make the bid, this is my advice to you, is to emphasize the environmental aspect of our bid and our service. And he's, the boss was like, this really doesn't have anything to do with the bid, but why would you want me to do that? He says, I just feel really strongly that that's what we need to do. So when the boss made the bid and he made his presentation, he emphasized the environmental aspect of that. And uh, a few days later, they, re they found out that they received the multi-million dollar bid for the company. They were awarded the contract. And the reason that was given that they received the bid was that the, the company said, that awarded the bid, said, you didn't know it, but it was real important priority for us to deal, to have a healthy environmental plan uh, for this particular job. And you were the only bidder that had that included in the bid, and that's why we awarded you the contract. It was supernaturally revealed to him, you shall receive ability, you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And that executive was able to use that knowledge for the advantage of his company. Do you think he gained favor and, uh, with his, in his company? Do you think he gained favor with his boss? Do you think he, he gained stature? And then he could start revealing to them how he came to the conclusion of emphasizing the environmental bid. The kingdom of God being infiltrated into the leaven of this company. There was another man that I, I heard of. I never met him, but I remember him telling his story. He was a successful entrepreneur and very rarely to never invested in companies that were not successful. And they asked him, what is your secret? He says, I'll tell you my secret. He says, I listen to presentations all the time of people asking for money and for me to invest in their companies. And he says, every time someone does their pitch, I always say, I'll get back with you. I go to my prayer closet and I wait until I get a green light or a red light in my spirit. And I follow that every time. And he says, sometimes 
I've had people come to me with presentations and they were well polished. They seemed like they were sure bets. And I would listen to these presentations and then I'd go to my prayer closet and I'd get the red light and I'd come out and say to the person, listen, thanks for taking your time, but I'm not gonna invest in, in your idea. He said, other times I've had people come into my office, tie disheveled, fumbling through the presentation. I'm listening. I go to my prayer closet and I get the green light and I contact this person and say, listen, I like your idea. I'm going to go with it. And it ends up being successful. He said, it doesn't depend on what I hear naturally. But he says, I always wait on the Lord to get the green light or the red light, and that's how I do business. That's a marketplace minister. That's someone who's relying on his partnership with the Lord in order to execute and do signs and wonders in the marketplace. And as he gets blessed through his investments, he's able to invest into the kingdom of God and to do the works that need to be done uh, to meet this, the needs of the city, of the marketplace, and do all the things that the kingdom does. So my message to you is that God wants to, to anoint you with the Holy Spirit power and abilities to work in the unique job that you have. What are three implications of this? Number one, prayer needs to be the backbone of your marketplace ministry. The three things that all those three examples had was that they were people of prayer and they brought the problems of the marketplace to their prayer life and waited to get a divine solution for an earthly problem and every time it came out as a sign and a wonder. The second thing, implication, is that you need to see your placement in the marketplace as your parish. You need to see your job as your pulpit. That's the place where you have been planted to bring and to, to solve the problems that can't be solved naturally. You're called to bring, bring healing. You're called to bring all the things that come with being imbued by the power of the Spirit. Can you imagine if you have a boss or you're working for someone and they find out that their wife has cancer? devastated by it and you say well can I come pray for them well I don't believe in prayer you don't have to I do and you go pray for the person you go pray for the wife the wife gets supernaturally healed can you imagine the impact that that has on your boss on the culture of your company on the culture of the system and starts being circulated into the whole milieu of your business third implication can you imagine if we had hundreds or even thousands of marketplace ministers that were being imbued with the Holy Spirit and power and ability and they were doing ministry all over the, all over the city, Monday through Saturday, from morning to evening, every day, and releasing Holy Spirit wisdom and power and abilities in the marketplace and have an impact on the entire city, all around the city, every day. It's like having church all day, every day, everywhere, all around the city. Isn't that a beautiful vision? I really feel strong that the Lord wants to raise up in our city marketplace ministers who will be functioning at a higher level than what they're capable of naturally and starting to become signs and wonders in their places of business and making a divine impact on our city and being a light in the darkness, being leaven or yeast in the dough of our city and infiltrating it with the kingdom of God. I really believe that the Lord wants to release an anointing upon you today. He wants to release his Holy Spirit upon you in a greater way. And I'm going to pray for that right now. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We worship you. 
We thank you for the promise that we shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. We shall receive ability and become witnesses all throughout our city. So right now I'm asking you to release your presence, to release your power upon everyone that's looking at this video right now. Raise up marketplace ministers who will do signs and wonders, who will receive words of knowledge, who will do acts do uh, working of miracles, to have words of wisdom, to be able to discern spirits behind people. May the gifts of the Spirit be manifested in the marketplace, and I'm asking you to release it now, to release it upon each person here. May your Holy Spirit come, just like it did 2,000 years ago, and released a host of witnesses throughout Jerusalem. And I'm asking you to release that upon everyone that's listening, that's viewing this today and increasing their anointing for business. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and look forward to seeing you next time when we get into Marketplace Ministry, lesson number two.